Good morning and God bless you. We're delighted to have you with us here this morning. Maybe this is your first time tuning in and joining us. We extend a warm welcome to you and trust that you're blessed with what you hear today. We want to begin with prayer. We want to continue to pray uh, for the condition and the direction of our nation and our world. We also want to pray for Cornerstone Pentecostal Church and wherever you attend, pray for your congregation and your pastor. And then lastly, we want to remember our brothers and sisters around the world. Um, maybe you have a special and spoken request. It's a perfect time to make that known unto God. Let's pray together. Father, we love you. We praise you. Father, thank you for including us in what you are doing in this hour. And thank you for calling us out of darkness into this marvelous light. Father, we pray for our nation and our world. We pray for a great and effectual door of utterance to be opened up to the apostolic movement in this moment of time. God, I also pray for Cornerstone Pentecostal Church. I pray that you'll open up the windows of heaven, pour out your divine favor and blessing. And lastly, my brothers and sisters around the world, wherever they may be, provide each and every one of them a hedge of protection. We ask all of this in the name above every name, the name of Jesus. Everybody said amen. All the way back to the book of Genesis, chapter number 2. And we're going to start in verse number 15. Verse number 15. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Um, this is a familiar passage of scripture to all of us. And I want to entitle this, this is going to be a two-parter. There will be part number two tomorrow. But I want to talk to us that choices have consequences. Choices have consequences. God, of course, creates man in his image and in his likeness, and they are not synonymous. Man is like the animal kingdom in that he possesses sensory ability, hearing, seeing, being able to interact with environment, But man is not like the animal kingdom. Man is made in the image of God and in his likeness. Man has a living soul. He has the ability. He is the only created being that has the ability to comprehend God. He has logic, he has memory, he has will, he has the faculties of comprehension and comprehension is a big, big, big deal not just for the sake of circumspection, which is 
understanding environment and things around you and your relationship with those things, but the ability to comprehend self and God. But more than any other thing, is man is given the power of choice. And God will not violate this. The animal kingdom, um, even beyond that, getting into insects and fish and birds have a predilection. They have, they have, they are hardwired. They have instinctive qualities and they operate off of instinct and they are given a predilection by God to understand mating and food gathering and nest building and um, et cetera, et cetera. Man is unique in that he has the power to choose. And God will not violate man's ability to choose. We have several examples here in Genesis, the book of beginnings, where I see a unique effort done on God's part to inform. And God appears to do this so that man is better served because he possesses the ability to choose. So God plants a garden, by extension, paradise. He places man in the garden to dress it and to keep it, gives him a job description, gives him employment, if you please. And he gives Adam information now, this is very important. Um, it's, not, it's not difficult to understand, very simplistic, but it's extremely important. God brings information to Adam so that he can make a choice. Let's look at this real quick, and I will make a few comments about this. And the Lord God commanded the man saying, of every tree of the garden, thou mayest freely eat. Now Adam is in the garden. He is placed by God. He is, he is where God wants him to be. And he is first telling him what he can do, what he should do, what he can do may freely eat of every tree that's in the garden. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shall not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. There is a tree in every man's garden. There is going to be the forbidden. There has to be. Philosophically, spiritually, and in reality, there have to be some things that are off limits because that qualifies man being a free moral agent, that he will live or die based on his choices. And I'm looking at this and... It is part of the genius of God because Adam is different and Adam needs to know. He needs to have the information 
I'm not going to explain to him why. Death is a concept to him that he has no understanding about death. He has no previous or prior experience with death. It is just because God said so. And so he is placed within proximity of the forbidden. Eve is not present here in Genesis chapter number two, but Adam, it's, it's revealed unto us because of the distinction between Genesis two and Genesis chapter number three. Now we see in Genesis chapter three that the serpent is there. The adversary is there. And a conversation begins with the serpent and with Eve. And she is rehearsing exactly what God told Adam with one addition. And that is that don't even touch it. When God was speaking to Adam, he could have, if, um, if he wanted, if he had chosen to do so, he could have, he could have taken of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and put it in a, in a bowl. He could have used it as a, as a deck, a decorative ornament on their coffee table or on their kitchen table or whatever the case may be, as long as he did not ingest it. Because in the day that you eat thereof, you shall surely die. So he adds, when relaying this to Eve, he adds, I don't even want you to touch it. Knowing his wife, loving his wife, knowing that there is a difference between him and her, he was trying to protect her. So they both ate it. The book of 1 Timothy says that Adam was in complete disobedience and Eve was deceived. She was deceived and he disobeyed. And their eyes were open and they saw that they were naked and everything changed. Choices have consequences. Now, in a, something that's related to this is here we have their children, Cain and Abel. And the Lord God said unto Cain, why art thou wroth and why is thy countenance fallen? He was upset. He was visibly upset because With his offering, God had no respect, but God had respect to Abel's offering. You may remember Cain brought an offering of the ground and his brother brought an offering of the flocks. God continues to talk to Cain. If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted and If thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door, and unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. And Cain talked with Abel his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and slew him. The first murder. Everything changes as the population increases. But God spoke to Adam and God spoke to Cain, informing them that choices will have consequences. And brothers and sisters and ladies and gentlemen, Choices still have consequences. Several years ago, um, I 
it was while the church was in the midst of COVID. We, we were having a church service across the street at a family, excuse me, had a family in our congregation at that time. Good people, good, good family, godly people. One of them had a family member that attended a couple times. They, they, I think they were attending just so that they could be with their grandchildren. Um, they weren't really apostolic. I don't think they were really buying into truth and the church and all that, but they were there. Everything was fine. There was no problem. But they called the health department on the church. And when I found out about this, because I got a call from the health department, I told this person, I contacted this person, I said, you will no longer be welcome here at Cornerstone. I informed um, the family, obviously, that there was some displeasure there. There were some more questions and answers involved. Before it was all over, there was apologies and explanations made, and we rescinded that. We retract that request. But at the time, we said, you're no longer going to be welcome here at Cornerstone. You're going to have to go somewhere else. Choices have consequences. Here, just of late, um, several days ago, um, there was a situation that emerged in the congregation that I had to deal with head on directly. And because choices were made, and make no mistake about it, when choices are made that are against the word of God, I am bound as a God called and a God play, placed servant and as a um, somebody that was that was put here by God, I am going to take God's side because choices have consequences. There are things that take place all the time where I may have more information that I am allowed to, I cannot give everything I know. And this is where people have to learn to trust the ministry. They, they have to learn to trust, even if they get their feelings hurt, even if they are, they don't understand, pastor, I don't understand. And, and I get all of that, but you have to learn to trust that choices have consequences. It's a big deal. And that's, that's one of the most obvious characteristics that reveals that you are made in the image of God. God has given us information. God has given the power of the Holy Ghost. God has even given us godly examples but if you want to go ahead and eat of the forbidden, if you want to partake of the tree, if you want, if you want to do what you want to do, just remember, choices have consequences. And sometimes those consequences can be very far reaching. In Adam's case, it affected the entire human race. In Cain's case, it affected Cain as an individual and became a fugitive and a vagabond and affected his downline, his progeny. You don't have to have all of the information. In fact, if you'll, if you'll take God's side and just say, I'm not going to do that because it's talked about in the Word of God. In my opinion, that is the highest level of exercising personal wisdom. I don't have to experience it. I don't have to go out and 
do drugs to see what tr drugs is going to feel like, and I don't have to go out and and have a, a string of godless extramarital affairs to see what that's like. No. I'm going to take God's side. That is personal wisdom. Because we learn three different ways. We can either we can either take God's side on this and manifest wisdom and obedience, or we can see the effects of that in somebody else's life that has done that. And lastly, we can learn the hard way. We can become the direct recipients of living a life because we misused our ability to choose. It's a big deal. It is a big deal. I am so glad that God offers to the human race. There are two messages that resonate with me more than any other messages in the Bible in terms of, of duration. One of them is separation. God separated during the days of creation and will separate, there will be eternal separation. The other one is repentance. Repentance is the ability, the God-given ability to recognize. God forgive me. I'm going to get it right next time. God is awesome. God bless you. Thank you for joining us here this morning. Remember, choices, choices are very important. They mean something. We'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow.